Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to talk about what's new in the latest version of Gigapixel AI, version 5.6. This is an image I took with a Nikon Z7 II and a Nikon 105mm f2.8 macro lens. As you can see, there's nothing very special about it. So, what I decided to do is a tight crop onto the flower to the lower right, and I came up with this. And I think this is a much more compelling image. The problem, though, is I cropped away a ton of pixels. If we look at the resolution of the original uncropped raw file you can see it's 8256 by 5504 my cropped image is 2118 by 1412 the problem is if i wanted to print anything larger than maybe a 4 by 5 it would look lousy because the image just doesn't have the resolution for a larger print that is where gigapixel ai comes in now of course gigapixel ai works as a standalone app you could send a raw file directly into it. It also works as a plugin in Lightroom, Photoshop, Apple Photos, On One Photo Raw, and probably some other apps I'm just not thinking of at the moment. I'm going to use it as a Lightroom plugin only because it's easier to show you a comparison between all the different images I'll have uh, from within Lightroom. So I'm gonna send this image as is, a uh, cropped image, into Gigapixel AI. I'm gonna right click right on the image. And I'm gonna go down to Edit In and I'm gonna go down to Topaz Gigapixel AI. I'm going to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments with these specs and click edit. And you can see in the top left hand corner, there's a progress bar, Lightroom is creating that TIFF file and it's opening it up into Gigapixel AI and you can see it's open here. Now, there's a few things that are new that I wanna talk about. I'm just gonna zoom out a bit uh, in Gigapixel AI. And one thing I'm gonna show you, um, first of all, I mean, whenever software is updated, they do bug fixes and performance improvements, and they say they've done that here. The other thing is they've improved the color and tone processing for RAW and DNG files. Now, of course, that isn't applicable in this image uh, because uh, it's, a, it's not a RAW file, but if it were, um, you would find that the color and tone is improved. The reason being, and this is something, by the way, they did with the last update to Sharpen AI as well. Uh, the reason is, in the past, if you took an image and you used a camera-specific profile on that image from within your camera, when you sent the image into Gigapixel AI, Gigapixel AI rem uh, ignored that camera-specific profile and used its own profile. And often their profile differed in color uh, contrast and tone so it just looked different while well, now it will use that camera specific profile that you used so that actually is something that is significant if you're often sending uh, raw files into gigapixel ai and you're often using a camera specific profile that you want to keep using throughout your workflow uh, that is a significant change they also overhauled ai model downloads there's five different ai models here and Whenever you use one of these AI models with specific settings, it, it uses uh, some like model like software that it uses to apply to the image. And the problem is uh, if they included every single nuance of the AI models into the gigapixel download, either when you first purchase it or when you update it, the download would you be humongous. So what they do is, uh, when you click through the AI models um, the first time, it will download the specific AI model for the settings you're using on the image you're using it on. And people have, that have slower internet connections, this was a real problem. It would really bog things down. So they've improved that now. So apparently that is working better. Now it's my understanding, I could be uh, wrong on this, I'm not 100% sure, but it's my understanding like 
when you download the AI model, it doesn't have to download it tomorrow or the next day. It just downloads it the one time, and then you're good to go for you know for you know the, as long as you're using the software. But there are different AI models, five different ones here, and then the AI models for the specific settings you're using all change. So that was kind of a log jam for some people downloading those AI models. Supposedly they have improved that. Um, the other thing I want to show you, it's a new comparison view. Um, if we, you look right now, we're looking at the standard AI model and you might look and oh, it's kind of a little funky over here. And by the way, I'm let's say going to increase the size of this four times. So I'm going to go from 2118 by 1412 to 8472 by 5648. So that's more comparable to the original raw file, right? Uh, so I'm going to use that 4x scale. And this is the standard AMA model. And you're looking at it and you may see it looks a little funky there. What does lines look? Well, that looks even worse. Then what does this look like? Art and CG, that's eh, about the same. Low res, see what that looks like? You have to see in the lower left, it's updating the preview. That looks about the same, maybe, maybe a little better. And that one might look a little, little, little more refined, looks sharper overall, but there are, you know, settings involved. But anyway, so you'd have to click through. Uh, you could have gone up to view and gone to split view, uh, where you have this line here that you could pull back and forth. Or you could go up to view and do side by side view, but now they have a comparison view. With the comparison view, you could look at three of those five AI models at the same time. Now there are four squares. This is the original image on the top left. Here happens to be the standard model. Over here happens to be the lines model. Over here is the art and CG model. And those of you that use Sharpen and, and Denoise know that this comparison view was or is in those applications as well. Well, it's finally in Gigapixel. The cool thing too that um, you may look as you look through it, uh, let's say, and say, um, you know what, the, the, you know, I don't know, just let me take a quick look and see. Um, all right, so I don't like the art and CG. I think that's the worst of the three. Uh, what's low resolution look like? All I need to do is have this one active and re when I click on low resolution, it will replace low resolution with or it will replace, I'm sorry, art and CG with low resolution. That one, you know, if that doesn't look, I can move it around. I wanted to look at this kind of funky area up here, right? Now I have to wait for all of them to update again. And I say, you know, well, that one's all right. Let's go to very compressed and see what that looks like and see how it replaced the active model with very compressed. And you could see how it replaced it. That looks the cleanest, doesn't it? The other thing you could do is you could vary settings. Let's say you decide that very compressed is the best with auto settings and you want to compare it to another very compressed model with different settings. Just highlight something else. I'm going to highlight uh, standard. Then I'm going to click on very compressed. And what it will do is it will replace standard with very compressed. And we have very compressed at the top right and the lower right. But the top right one, I'm going to uh, bring down suppress noise because I don't think there's a lot of noise in this. Maybe I'll bring it up just a little. And maybe I'll try um, not removing as much blur. Or maybe remove a little more blur. So you could see you could use um, the same AI model in different boxes with different settings as well. Not only different AI models in different boxes. Hopefully that made sense. Let's go with this, this one right here. That was the auto settings. So I'll just make that active. So it's active and then click apply. So it's going to use that one and um, then open back up in Lightroom and we'll see how it works. So that's nice that it added that comparison view because it was kind of a pain in the neck before even using the side by side view. You only could compare the original image to one of the models, whereas this I think works a lot better. Now, if you ever run into this when you use uh, any plugin as a plugin or any app as a plugin in Lightroom, often Lightroom comes up with this little like three arrow thing in this three line thing in this up arrow. That means it's got um, a discrepancy between the metadata. The metadata that um, in this case 
gigapixel wrote to the file and the metadata that it has for the file. You want to use the gigapixel metadata. You can see I'm clicked on it and it's showing, still showing the size up here is 2118 by 1412. We just enlarged that four times. So click on those, uh, those three lines in that up arrow and you want to make sure you import the settings from the disk. That is the settings that gigapixel wrote. All right, so we're going to click that middle box and then you'll see now it's 8472 by 5648. And if I click off it and click on, then that um, preview in the um, film strip becomes active. So there is our large image now. There is our small image. And there is the original uncropped image. So you could see it did a really good job. I mean, it made it even sharper too. Go like there. You can see it's not zooming in at the same rate because this is the smaller image. And that's that. So it looks really good. It looks really nice and sharp. Did a nice job. I could get a really large print from this if I wanted to. So that is Gigapixel AI version 5.6. Uh, in the description below this video, I'll have a link uh, to their website. Uh, they have a fully working free trial. I also have a discount code if you decide to purchase it. You could use that discount code and save yourself a few dollars. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.